Let's imagine you're on a roller coaster ride. The sun blinds your eyes, the wind is in your face, and you hear the other passengers' laughter. <laughs> awesome, right? When you fall, the adrenaline rushes through your blood, and you feel happy. But suddenly, instead of joyful laughter, there are shrieks of terror. Just now, right there before your eyes, a passenger sped out of their seat during a sharp turn and fell from a height of a few dozen meters. You don't believe this can happen? What if I tell you that much worse things have happened in amusement parks in the long history of their existence? On March 24, 2022, 14-year-old Tyree Sampson went with his football team on holiday to Icon Park in Orlando, USA. There, the boys decided to go for a ride on Orlando Freefall, the world's tallest freestanding drop tower, which was 131 meters tall. But an ordinary day off turned into a tragedy. When the movable part of the ride got to the top of the tower and started falling, Tyree slipped out of his seat and hit the ground. The eighth grader died on the spot. According to the forensic expert report, the leading cause of Samson's death was a mistake on the part of a park employee. As it turned out, the freefall ride operator had loosened the safety belt on Samson's seat. It had likely been done during the ride's launch to accommodate customers weighing more than 130 kilograms. The investigation showed that Samson's safety belt was almost twice as loose as necessary. Because of this, the boy fell out of his seat during the ride. After Samson's death, Orlando Freefall and an adjacent ride, Orlando Slingshot, were closed until further notice. The company Orlando Slingshot, which had designed the ride, made a statement that proclaimed the company's decision to withdraw this model from production after the boy's death, and Icon Park supported this call. A civil rights attorney, Ben Crump, who represents Samson's father, has referred to this decision as long overdue. Theme parks, their parent companies, and regulatory agencies must do better to prevent this kind of tragedy from happening to any other family, he said in a statement. But sadly, this isn't the first time such a tragedy has happened in the U.S. On July 9th, 2011, James Hackamer, an Iraq War veteran, died in a tragic roller coaster accident at the Darien Lake Amusement Park in the north of New York. Three years before that, in March of 2008, Hackamer was serving in Iraq when his vehicle hit a makeshift explosive device. As a result, the man sustained some injuries, including the amputation of both legs. When Hackamer expressed the wish to go on a roller coaster ride at Darien Lake, park employees were unable to secure a safety belt on him. Because of this, the man was put in the first coach with the explanation that he would be able to hold onto the barrier in front of him with his hands. And because he had no safety belt, during one of the turns, the man was hurled out of the seat on the Ride of Steel coaster, which was moving at 80 kilometers per hour. Hackamer was at the park with his children and sister, but luckily, his children weren't around at the time of the tragedy. Instead, Hackamer was accompanied by his nephew, Ashton Lufred. Ashton said the park employees did not object to the disabled veteran's wish to ride the roller coaster and did not ask any questions. He was determined to ride every roller coaster, his sister Jody Hackamer told the Associated Press. That minute he was on that ride, he probably felt the happiest and most normal he's felt in three and a half years. State investigators ruled an operator's mistake as the cause of the tragedy, and the ride was back in operation that same year. But sometimes, you don't even have to buy a roller coaster ride ticket to get a deadly injury. Just standing nearby can be enough. In 2015, a teenager was decapitated on a roller coaster ride after he jumped over some fences and entered a forbidden zone. This horrific accident happened at the Six Flags over Georgia Park. 17-year-old Asia LaShawn Ferguson from Springfield got over two two-meter-tall fences 
ignoring the signs that warned of the area ahead being a dangerous forbidden zone. Most likely, the boy was trying to get his hat, which fell off his head while he was on a ride. But some witnesses say he wanted to prank the passengers of the ride by grabbing someone's foot when the coach would be passing over his head. The boy received a deadly blow almost immediately after getting under the roller coaster. The foot of one of the passengers who sat in a coach moving at 80 kilometers per hour hit the boy on the head. This blow immediately decapitated him. The police claim the boy's death to be an accident. Six Flags decided to show respect to the Ferguson family by closing the roller coaster on the day of the tragedy. But the next day, the coaster continued to give rides to happy visitors of the park. But that wasn't the first accident at the Six Flags network. Two years before, in 2013, Rosie Esparza was torn apart while riding the Texas Giant roller coaster at Six Flags Over Texas Amusement Park. Even before the beginning of the ride, the woman expressed concern over her safety belts after she got on the coaster. An operator assured her they were properly secured, and the roller coaster started its fatal journey. When the coach made a sharp turn, Esparza's safety belts loosened, and the woman was flung 23 meters into the air right before the eyes of her terrified daughter. Her partially torn body was found wrapped around a hinge on the roof of the Honky Tonk Tunnel. Immediately after the incident, the police launched an investigation. But two months later, the ride resumed operation after restrainers and new safety belts were installed. Esparza's family sued Six Flags and Gerstlauer, the roller coaster manufacturer. As a reaction, the park and Gerstlauer sued each other regarding the responsibility for the accident. Eventually, both companies reached an undisclosed agreement with the victim's family. But accidents don't always happen on expensive rides. Sometimes, a simple net is enough. 12-year-old Tegan Marty saw a terminal velocity roller coaster on a cable TV show. Eager to pull off the leap of faith, a backward fall from a height herself, the girl talked her parents into taking her to Extreme World Adventure Park in Wisconsin Dells. The family drove all the way to the park from their home in Florida just to let young Tegan fulfill her dream. Here's how the ride worked. The participants were thrown off of a height of more than 30 meters, that is, from around nine stories high, into a net with no safety belts whatsoever. Standing in line for the Extreme World ride, the girl's mother, Julie Marty, recognized the ride operator. He was the person who had praised the supposed safety of terminal velocity on a TV show, even though the ride had no safety belts or bandages, and people just fell into the net from a great height. In the photographs taken before the horrific accident happened to Tegan, the girl is beaming with a wide smile. It was now Tegan's turn. Her father turned on the camera, and her mother was anxiously watching from down below. The girl got to the top, 30 meters above the ground, and jumped. And then, something horrible happened. Tegan fell right onto the concrete. The operator mistakenly let go of her before the safety net was installed below. The girl broke her spine and pelvis and received head trauma and numerous grave injuries. The girl was taken to the hospital, and for a long time, she remained on a ventilator in a stable but critical condition. The doctor said she had brain swelling, numerous grave fractures of the spine and the pelvis, and laceration of the liver, spleen, and bowels. They said Tegan might remain paralyzed forever. The girl who won a well-deserved place in the National Junior Honor Society with her outstanding grades could now only communicate by blinking. Once for yes, twice for no. Fast forward 17 months. 14-year-old Tegan was back in the state of Wisconsin again to promote the project of expanding the hospital, which had saved her life. The girl walked through the hall by herself using only a walker for support. The ride operator, 33-year-old Charles A. Carnell, was charged with first-degree reckless injury, a crime punishable by 25 years in prison and a $100,000 fine. Carnell told the prosecutors he had blanked out and hadn't waited for the all-clear signal before letting go of Tegan. But sometimes, accidents happen due to the owner's desire to save money on the visitor's safety. On December 24, 
1998, a massive metal cleat detached from the hull of a ride called Sailing Ship Columbia. On the way down, it hit two park visitors and one Disney employee. One of the visitors, 33-year-old Luann Fee Dawson, who had sustained a head injury in the accident, later died in the emergency room. This was the first death at a Disneyland ride that wasn't the visitor's fault. Luann received two grave head injuries and an injury of a large blood vessel in the brain. His wife, Lou Vuong, also sustained head trauma but survived. Mrs. Vuong received plastic surgery to sew the cuts on the right side of her face. A Disneyland employee, Christine Carpenter, had a severe leg injury but got proper hospital treatment. As shown in further investigation, the strap, which was supposed to hold the metal cleat in place, had been replaced with a rope made from unsuitable material to save money. Apart from that, the ship's approach to the dock was too fast, and the rope, which was used instead of a strap, wasn't strong enough to slow down the vessel's movement. Responsibility for the accident was attributed not to the ride operator, but to the park management. The victim's family won around $25 million in court. The Columbia ride remains out of operation to this day. The incredible heights of roller coasters remain the central feature of such rides, but that's also what makes them dangerous. On July 11, 2010, 21-year-old Lindsay Zeno visited Blue Bayou Water Park. Zeno got on a ride called Extreme Coaster, a roller coaster that had been in operation for about three years. Minutes into her ride, the girl fell from a height of 9 meters and eventually died from trauma sustained. We weren't sure exactly what caused the accident. It could have happened due to a faulty safety belt mechanism. One of the witnesses claims he saw Zeno try to secure her safety belt when the coach made a sharp turn and flung her into the air. Louisiana State Fire Marshal Butch Browning sent inspectors from his department to check the roller coaster. According to him, all of the mechanical parts of the coaster were in their place and without fault. Nevertheless, after the accident, the ride was closed forever. On August 11, 1996, a mini train at Old Indiana Fun Park was derailed and turned over, crushing two people with its weight. The victims were four-year-old Emily Hunt, who got paralyzed from the chest down, and her 57-year-old grandma, Nancy Jones. This horrific catastrophe not only makes your skin crawl, but also causes incredible anger at old Indiana Fun Park representatives, since they have made every mistake imaginable. Investigation showed that the train was moving much faster than the project speed of 19 kilometers per hour. When the operator tried to hit the brakes, they didn't work, and it's still unclear whether they had been damaged or weren't there at all. Also, most anti-derailment devices had not been installed. The speedometer was broken, and the tracks were strewn with litter. Later, it became known that the safety inspector, who had checked the ride twice three months before the accident, admitted he wasn't qualified for this job. Even the park's own records proved that the mini train had been derailed 79 times in the previous two months. This wasn't the first problem with old Indiana. In 1996, the park was fined for 77 instances of breaking the law against child labor. There were also materials in the Indianapolis Star about the inhumane treatment of animals, including a tiger. The owners of Old Indiana Fun Park admitted negligence, but denied the information about the ride's condition before the accident. Since then, they declared bankruptcy, and most rides in the park were sold at an auction the following year. And this next roller coaster accident became the deadliest in history. The expression of terror on a little girl's face before her death will always remain in Carolyn Adamchik's memory. The girl was one of the children who died in the catastrophe at Battersea Park in 1972. Carolyn was a 14-year-old schoolgirl when the tragedy happened. The Big Dipper ride in South London broke while operating, killing five little children. Carolyn was lucky enough to survive. Wooden roller coasters have the reputation of potentially deadly traps. They wear down quickly and require constant maintenance. Even the slightest negligence can lead to a massive disaster. When the train was being hoisted to the start of the ride, its haulage rope broke loose from one of the carriages 
and the mechanism broke down. The wooden train was going above the park with 31 passengers on board. Carolyn turned over and noticed the train operator was hitting the brakes, but they weren't working. Most train carriages did not take a turn, and one of them jumped the rails to the side, crashing into a wooden fence. The train then took a sharp turn and hit another train waiting in the boarding zone. Right after the crash, Carolyn and her friends got stuck in a relatively intact carriage 15 meters above the ground. Around five children died in the catastrophe, and 13 more received severe wounds. The roller coaster was not repaired, and the Battersea Fun Fair was closed two years later. Every year, around 30,000 accidents that result in trauma, both minor and grave, happen in amusement parks. Even though the industry group representing theme parks and water parks says the odds of sustaining serious injuries on a roller coaster in an average U.S. amusement park is 1 to 16 million, this danger should still not be ignored. After all, the human element, faulty equipment, or the banal desire to profit off safety can often lead to deadly consequences. If this video has sparked your interest, hit the like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already.